Hi there, my name is Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is a very quick revisit video on the Dell all-in-one computer here. So if you haven't seen the first video and you want to, maybe you should stop this video now because I'm going to be talking, at, well, I've already bought it for you anyway because you're seeing a screen that's working. Basically, I bought it from eBay and it had no display. I changed over the secondary board with all the ports on it and then that got the display working. So now it is a working PC. But unfortunately, Bluetooth wasn't working, the webcam wasn't working down here, and also the main thing for me is the touch screen wasn't working. I thought they were driver related issues. And then I put the video out there as a kind of part success, part failure, because got it working, understood quite a bit about it, which is good, but at the same time, couldn't get those things working. I put it down to driver issues. I spent ages trying to put all different drivers on it from different years, versions, and I still couldn't get it to work. So I just left it at that and released a video. Loads and loads and loads of helpful comments have come through, like loads of comments on that video. So, a lot of people were saying try Windows 8, try Windows 7, just in case maybe, see this was shipped out in 2017, so I thought, well, that's just giving it away now, ah, sorry, let's carry on. Uh, uh, it would have been shipped out with Windows 10 anyway, but still, I put Windows 8.1 on this little hard drive here, plugged this one into the back because I didn't want to get rid of this Windows 10, and then, yeah, sure enough, got Windows 8.1 working, yet still those things weren't working. There was loads of different comments on what to do and uh, things I could try. What was interesting was quite a few people said that the touchscreen, the Bluetooth and also the uh, webcam are all USB based. So it might not be a driver issue, it might be something that maybe is not getting the right voltage or something like that. And I thought, hmm, that's quite interesting. And then I was speaking to Gadget UK 164 about uh, an Atari Lynx issue that I'm currently working on. and. Uh, he then mentioned this Dell all-in-one and he said maybe you should see if those faults are linked. And I know now, because of the comments that came through, that they are linked. And then I said to him, I said, well, they are linked. And then I said that uh, there is a chip on the back that gets extremely hot. And I think it's the platform controller hub. And I believe that controls the USB, but I could be wrong. I'm presuming it's the main uh, CPU chip that does the USB, but then I don't know what that platform controller hub's for. Not too sure. But I'm pretty sure from watching anonymous repairs videos in the past that if the USB ports are shorted on the data pins, that can suggest a problem with the platform controller hub. So uh, uh, when I said to Chris that that's getting incredibly hot, he said, well, that doesn't sound right. So there's a heat sink on it, so it must be designed to get a bit hot. But this one's like burning hot. You can't leave your finger on it for more than a few seconds. So I was thinking, mm, well, that's all quite interesting. And then I read one message, which I'm going to show you in a little while, that said, Vince, you can get the touchscreen working. I've had the same problem. And what I did is I converted it to USB. I put basically put a USB plug on the end of the touchscreen cable, and then it started to work. And I thought, wow. But from memory, I thought there was loads of wires on that touchscreen cable. Well, there wasn't. So check this out now. Boom. Boom, boom. Da -da, da 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 Look at that. Touchscreen is now working. How good is that? And apparently it's a 10 point touchscreen, so it can uh, detect 10, uh, 10 uh, finger touches. And as well as that, I've plugged in a little Bluetooth dongle. And have you, if you see here, Bluetooth, you can see on, not connected. So now the, uh, the Bluetooth should be working as well. As I said, can't do anything about the camera because I messed it up anyway, but I suppose with the camera, no, I couldn't have converted that to USB because it had loads of wires. I think it had about 10 wires on it, unless maybe I could have converted it to USB three. I don't know how many, I think that's got, oh, you know, that might have eight or nine or 10 wires. Yeah, I've never looked into that. So uh, anyway, I've, I've messed up the camera part of it. All I had to do was chop up a USB cable, do black to black, red to red, white to white, green to green, plug it into the USB port, turn it on, and it all works straight away. It just came up after a few seconds, updating driver or something for it. That's it, it's all working. So let me zoom in and show you, and then I'll show you the comment that came through about that.
So originally the touch cable was plugged into here. Now, just in case I want to do any fault finding in the future, I've, when, when I cut the wires, I just left them here taped up so they can't cause any problem and left the connector in there. So this was the touch cable going down here. And all I've done is get a USB cable from here and just temporarily, just to see it's working, I need to do a nice job with for solder it up and use heat shrink and stuff and hide all this cabling. But you can see there, black to, well, it's red to red, green to green, white to white, on the touch cable there was two black wires yet on this usb cable there's only one black wire so i've put the one black wire from here onto the two black wires from here i think that might be quite common on on the go cables i think they've got i think they've got five wires rather than four but anyway the two wires black wires on here look to be shortened together when i was using my meter interestingly enough when i go across the black and the red wire here there is five volts so it's not a problem with the power it must be a problem with the data. But as soon as I plugged it in there, it all started to work. And you can see just underneath there that I've just plugged in a little Bluetooth dongle there, but it's fine. I've still got a USB-C connector there. I've still got two USB ports here on this side, and I've got a USB port on this side here as well. So there's absolutely loads of USBs. So it's, it's, it's a workaround, but it works. Now, I would quite like to do a further follow-up video where I actually try to find out what's wrong. Maybe from here I can follow the data pins and see where they go. But I'm just going to put this camera on a tripod and I want to get a temperature probe and put it on here just to show you how hot it's getting. That is red hot and unfortunately it means the lithium battery underneath is also very warm. Not as hot as that but very very warm. So it's a bit of an issue. So I'm going to be putting the temperature probe here onto this thing here using this uh, ceramic tweezers and I'm going to go down and zoom in on this so you can see what temperature it reaches. Obviously I'll be fast forwarding through. I managed to get up to 50 degrees Celsius earlier but it was getting too hot to, uh, too hot to hold. Right, it seems to have kind of stabilised around there. 59 degrees Celsius. It's still actually going up but it's, uh, it's slowing isn't it? So now maybe that is normal, but I don't know. It feels incredibly hot for me. And uh, I'm thinking if it was designed to get that hot, wouldn't it have some sort of like fan on it rather than just a, a heat sink like this, which isn't very big. So I think that's the problem. I reckon that the things that are working off USB are going through here. And I think that this has a short on it and that's what's knocking these out. But if everybody in the comments says that no no these are these are due to get that hot then maybe I can actually find out what the pro proper fault is by trying to work back whatever wherever this this and the camera connection wherever they go to obviously if they all go through here that's a BGA chip I'm not going to replace that but you never know maybe there's something else which is a which is shorting which is uh, knocking out the data on that or maybe it goes all the way back to the CPU under here I need to have a look at the pins again the pin out of that to see what controls the USB maybe there's a, a problem with the uh, connection under here but how amazing is that that touchscreen is now working look at it really really happy with that right let's give thanks where thanks is due so here is a message and it's from PN and it says, please read, you can fix touch. This model off all in one is so bad. I got one and after a few months, the touch screen stopped working. No idea why, tried all the drivers, etc. It's a motherboard fault they didn't fix or own up to. I had to put a USB-A connector on the touchscreen cable and it worked. Now I worry about the screen app issue happening to mine. Well, if it does, at least you know at this moment in time, the boards are very cheap on eBay. And it says here, my camera on Windows Hello also doesn't work. I think that that is also a USB thing. And looking at the comments on the video that I did, a lot of people are saying that all three of those things are uh, USB related. So I wonder whether or not it's the same thing on yours, where that chip is getting ridiculously hot. So uh, yeah, interesting. Now, let me show you the final finished up bit of this Dell all-in-one. I've now soldered up the cable and I've hidden it away, tucked it away. So uh, it, it really, it doesn't intrude at all. So this is the back of it here and the USB cable just goes out of the port and straight up in to uh, underneath this cover here. So really it doesn't, uh, it doesn't spoil the look whatsoever. Right, and I'm just gonna show you the screen working now without any keyboard. So let's try to get over to YouTube and my site without uh, using the keyboard. 
So bring up the keyboard down here. And there we have it, fantastic. So massive thanks to everybody that commented on this video. Now, some people think that I don't read the comments. I do read them. It's just that when you have hundreds of them on each video, which is fantastic, the, the problem lies not reading them, it's replying to them, especially if you're kind of a bit slow at typing and stuff like me. Uh, when I stopped doing that, about a year ago, it was taking me over one day a week to get back to all the comments, which is silly. And also, I suppose from a viewer's point of view, you'd probably rather I'd push out another video than have to reply to all the different uh, messages out there. But I promise you, I do read them. That's how I do my learning. Hence, for example, on this one here, you now see that it is working. That's purely from reading the comments. So thank you to everybody that did comment on that video. Massive thanks to PN for actually giving me the solution to the workaround to fix it. Now, if you think it is fixable on the inside, again, pop it down in the comments. I think it's to do with that, what I'm gonna call a platform controller hub, overheating massively. I think that's where the problem lies in this instance. But if you don't think it is that, and you think that's normal operation at that temperature, Again, I can do a revisit, a re revisit on this one and actually try to fault find from each connection going back and see what links all of them, which I think would be quite interesting. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Take care, everyone.